Once located on the northeast corner of 5th Avenue and 77th Street, the William A. Clark House, also known as Clark's Folly, was a magnificent beau art style mansion with a tower visible from nearly every corner of Central Park. But what happened to it? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Today we are exploring the history of one of the Upper East Side of Manhattan's most extravagant lost mansions. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of this house as we uncover America's history and architecture. William A. Clark was a wealthy entrepreneur and politician who made his fortune as a miner in the Montana Gold Rush. He commissioned a lavish beau art style mansion to be built by the firm Lord Hewlett & Hull in 1897. After 14 years, it was completed in 1911 at a cost of $7 million or the modern day equivalent of over $200 million. The mansion contained 121 rooms, 31 bathrooms, it boasted four art galleries, and even featured a private underground rail line to bring in coal for heat, which was a major undertaking at the time, to say the least. It was reported that Clark bought a quarry in New Hampshire to source the stones for his house. He also purchased a foundry and employed 200 men to manufacture the bronze fittings that would be used in the finishing of his house. But not everything he wanted could be sourced locally. He imported marble from Italy, old-growth oak from Sherwood Forest in England, and purchased rooms from a French chateau to be deconstructed, shipped, and reconstructed constructed at his mansion. The house spanned 250 feet on 77th Street and 77 feet on 5th Avenue, more than any other mansion on 5th along Central Park, with the exception of Andrew Carnegie's mansion, which we can see in this photo. Going inside the house, it soared through nine lavish stories, the Turkish baths steaming below the ground level and capped off by laundry rooms on the uppermost level. In the banquet room, dominating the wall, was a Numidian marble fireplace that measured 15 feet across, flanked with life-size figures of Neptune and Diana from Roman mythology. Continuing through the house, you would have encountered medieval tapestries, medieval artwork, and European artifacts decorating most of the rooms. Arriving at the breakfast room, you would have seen 170 carved wooden panels, each one being unique in its depictions and motifs. Going up to the second floor, there was a rotunda, 36 feet high and made of Maryland marble with eight marble columns said to have purple striations. This space was used as the statuary room. The statuary opened to a conservatory with ceilings that soared 30 feet above and constructed of brass and glass. Opposite the rotunda was a 95 foot long, two story high marble paneled main picture gallery, which was said to contain works of art by some of the finest artists. The Mire M. Harris organ which was designed by Arthur Scott Brooke, was housed in an organ loft. This organ was the largest in the United States at the time, with four manuals, a pedal board complete with 74 ranks, and 71 speaking stops. One of the rooms that Clark imported, the Salon Doré, was brought in from the 18th century L'Hôtel de Clermont in Paris, was reassembled in the house to be used as the receiving room. Of course, Clark did not build all of this in vain, as he loved to entertain. The mansion included 25 guest suites, each with their own private bathrooms. And for entertaining so many guests and upkeeping the house, Clark had 35 rooms included for the servants to live in, with the men's rooms in the East Wing and the women's rooms in the West Wing. Clark passed away in 1925, only enjoying his completed mansion for 14 years. William's widowed wife and daughter moved out of the house almost immediately to an apartment located at 907 Fifth Avenue, paying the modern day equivalent of $495,000 annually for rent. They sold the mansion for $3 million, or the modern day equivalent of $46 million. The new owner demolished the mansion in 1927 and constructed the current luxury apartment building that stands today at 960 Fifth Avenue. Speaking of luxury, you can now feel luxurious in this house-branded apparel now available in our merch shop. From t-shirts to hoodies, we've got you covered. As always, thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button. I would love to hear if you have any recommendations for other lost houses we should cover. If you know of any, let me know down below in the comments. And as always, a very special thank you to this house supporters whose names you can see on screen now. I'll see you next time on This House.